today we'll be going to dis- we are going to discuss on uh, sense of fusion and how it is an crucial component of autonomous vehicle development let's start so we'll be going through an introduction session wherein we'll be discussing various uh, mostly on autonomous systems the uh, what are the requirements of the system the system architecture and then we'll be moving on to uh, the state of the art of the perception technology which is a key part of auto- any autonomous systems and uh, the current trends in it we'll be take, uh, taking uh, into consideration two case studies uh, to uh, companies that are working on autonomous vehicle uh, systems development and then we'll be going into a bit of detail of sensor fusion uh, or we'll talk on different sensors that are used for perceptions and uh, finally we will conclude uh, with certain advantages and and industrial applications of sensor fusion uh, and some advice on job opportunities with the introduction so the primary reason for uh, the trend uh, for autonomous systems is to improve road safety decongest urban traffic and to reduce emission fuel consumption and the push towards shared mobility um and this is uh, this particular point the push towards shared mobility is kind of uh, slowing down but then still uh, it is a perspective that they are working on and then you have connect to mobility so here in this particular image graphic you can see there are key enablers for this transformation and there is few motivations for this transformation motivation uh, involving autonomous and shared reasons and then then you have uh, and the push or the enablers primarily electrification of automotive systems involve electric vehicles and uh, more electronic systems complex electronic systems intelligent systems which are embedded into the vehicle nowadays and uh, connected mobility which is the ability of the vehicle to communicate with uh, the environment or the surrounding for uh, for instance automotive iot uh, now uh, in order to understand better understand and the de- various levels of uh, development in automation or autonomous vehicle development uh, researchers and developers have actually come together uh, as organization like society of automotive engineers they have come about with a serious classification of autonomy based on the level of automation they are classified into six levels starting from level 0 and going up to level 5 uh, where in level 0 is no automation Uh, where in the full control of the vehicle is with the driver the ultimate aim of auto- autonomous vehicles are to remove the driver from the vehicle control loop the vehicle in itself is able to make control decisions uh, uh, to navigate to maneuver everything is controlled by the vehicle itself that is the ultimate goal uh, so and each step towards that is classified into autonomy levels wherein we start with zero and which in which driver is in full control of the vehicle and you have certain advanced features like information and warning systems like the parking parking sensors that we have in uh, most of the cars nowadays as default and uh, most of the cars that are available in india market are of level 0 autonomy and, uh, the, and then the next level is level 1 autonomy uh, which is like an assisted level uh, again here also the driver is a part of the vehicle control system and uh, you have more advanced feature advanced features like adaptive cruise control lane keep assist electronic stability control uh, apart, and it also include the features that were there in the previous autonomy level uh, moving forward to also it's kind of similar you have more additional advanced features but again the driver is crucial or important part of the vehicle control system then we move to level 3 here is where the actual trans- transformation happens so wherein uh, there is a transfer of control from the driver to the vehicle here the vehicle will be able to make control decision and uh, maneuver the vehicle on various infrastructure that is available but then at certain critical scenarios wherein the vehicle is not capable to make the control decision the trans the control is transferred back to the uh, driver and the driver is made uh, has to be alert and to take up the control at any 
moment when the tra control transfer happens. And at this stage of autonomy level, the vehicle has the ability to take la lateral and longitudinal control. I hope everyone is aware with uh, what I mean by lateral and longitudinal control. It is the vehicle's ability to uh, steer and move forward and backward uh, based on the requirements of the uh, motion. Then you have level four in which it is high automation or full automation, uh, some call. And then again, uh, here the vehicle, uh, the driver is totally out of, uh, can be totally out of the vehicle control loop. Uh, then you have the level five, which is full automation and we have uh, a self-driving vehicle. So uh, we, there are a lot of projects that is going ongoing on level three and above. Let's move to the next slide. So here uh, we'll be seeing the basic prototypical at, uh, autonomous stack or the basic setup of an autonomous system. So the ultimate goal of the autonomous system is to replace the driver. How the way th how to achieve this is by giving the vehicle the ability to, to sense its environment and uh, making it understand what the environment, how the environment is, and planning the motion accordingly and giving actuation signals to the systems accordingly. So here we have we uh, so this entire component, the sense, understand, plan, actuate. This entire stack comes inside the vehicle and the environment is are outside the vehicle and this is again a basic uh, generic autonomous system architecture uh, this is not a detailed version if you go to the autonomous systems uh, development uh, any uh, uh, researcher they would go for a more detailed uh, architecture wherein they will be having more components but this is the basic architecture in order for you to understand so here we have the basically the system is classified into three one is the perception system then you have the motion planning system and the co motion control system the perception system uh, takes into uh, manages the ability of the system to uh, sense the surrounding make an effective 3d map of the surrounding and uh, give the input to the motion planning system to make informed decisions and uh, the motion planning system uh, includes um, a mapping solution a planning solution which clubs these uh, uh, these technology these techniques in order to generate sign control signals to the motion control part wherein you have the actuators and powertrain chassis and steering to do the maneuvering of the vehicle and in the perception system it primarily consists of this uh, so in today's discussion we'll be concentrating on uh, sensor uh, on the perception system which will include sensors data acquisition and processing wherein the and the uh, the head of this particular workshop is that is sense of fusion and why this perception uh, system is required is the understanding of the environment which will include object detection localization tracking ego vehicle motion estimation we have uh, will uh, slowly dive into what is sensors the available sensors and sense of fusion according to current uh, like based on current trends there is uh, the perception systems include uh, two prime two types of sensors one is active sensors and passive sensors Sensors. These are the basic uh, classification. Active sensors include sensors like ultrasound sensors, radar sensors, LIDAR sensors. They are classified as active because their uh, methodology of sensing is, uh, uh, is active in which they send out a particular signal. They, it can be a, a ultrasound signal, a radio signal, or a laser a light signal, uh, which is rebound back from the object which, it, uh, which obstru obstructing the path of that particular signal and the reflected light is used to make the uh, measurements that is required by the system then you have the passive sensors which actually use transducers uh, in order to con uh, make the measurements uh, this include gps uh, which use gps satellite uh, the co satellite communication in order to understand the position of the uh, vehicle and then you have the IMU, which is inertial measurement unit, which include accelerometers, gyroscopes, and magnetometers uh, for position sensing, pose, and localization sensing. And then you have the cameras. Cameras are used for basically similar 
similar uh, similar functionality like lidar and radar for uh, for identifying objects and uh, for path planning and uh, there are two parts in uh, actually perception and, uh, systems that is first is the sensing part then you have the algorithm part the algorithms are the ones which actually enables the system to understand the environment and make uh, informed decisions as we mentioned in previous uh, that is the algorithms there are two types of appro two approaches to algorithms one is the classical approach and then you have the deep learning approach the classical approach use uh, well well established mathematical principles which include probability techniques and uh, filtering techniques in order to understand in order to make sense of the sensor uh, sensor inputs and uh, they can be easily programmed and they can be easily implemented they re require less computational requirements um, uh, unlike a deep learning approach which primarily is can be termed as again machine learning for example and it requires higher performance computational performance and require a lot of labeled data uh, here in deep learning again uh, you don't know exactly what you are working on it's like a black box model wherein you don't know the details of the system but then you use you map the inputs and outputs in order to train the system to behave in a particular manner that you want uh, where, uh, so here we use uh, deep neural networks and a lot of label data for developing the deep learning it requires high computational power as we mentioned before and it has a complex framework now uh, moving forward we will be uh, discussing about uh, two of the front runners in autonomous system development they are tesla and waymo we're discussing on how they are different from each other how their approach towards perception system is different so initial uh, let's start with tesla so tesla primarily concentrates on a perception system which uh, gives more primarily concentrates on uh, camera sensors or image processing uh, it is centered on uh, image processing and uses the uh, approach of neural uh, the deep learning approach that we mentioned before and the sensor configuration that they use is a 12 ultrasonic sensors for uh, it has a range of uh, 2 to 3 meters uh, that just give immediate surrounding of the uh, of the vehicle and a long range radar sensor in the front and eight camera sensors which give a 360 degree mapping of the vehicle surrounding and then these are high resolution cameras again as i told they use uh, neural networks and uh, artificial intelligence in order to make the uh, 3d map perception uh, on the other hand waymo they primarily concentrate on lidar sensors wherein uh, uh, lidar sensors and and they kind of use camera sensors uh, they don't uh, primarily use camera sensors but they are there for correlation and uh, so here they have three different lidar sensors uh, which are uh, long short and uh, different uh, different bands actually and then you have five radar sensors and eight camera sensors now the approach uh, followed by these two companies are different uh, and both of these approaches are successful okay waymo again they use a classical approach for the algorithm part of it wherein they use uh, sensor fusion kalman filters and um, advanced uh, a particle filter algorithms in order to make perception systems so these are the primary differences and the other major difference is in the data collection part of it wherein tesla uses real world data that is downloaded from the on road vehicles that they have on in europe us and across the globe whereas waymo they use simulation results by recreating real world scenarios in lab oh, okay now we are going to discuss on uh, sensor fusion okay so far uh, we discussed on sensors and we discussed on uh, the how they are implemented in Two part by two particular uh, companies. The main challenge for any com any autonomous system is on is you is to understand their environment, is to uh, because the automotive environment is primarily developed for uh, human drivers. Uh, humans they have the vision, they have the hearing, they have uh, nose, and they, uh, uh, the smell. So these are the so in a human brain these senses are fused and uh, and effective. Uh, information is generated by the brain. Uh, so, in order to bring that capability onto the uh, vehicles, they have to have effective sensors. And um, effective sensors, in in the sense, uh, it should be 
foolproof because it's a very it's a safety critical scenario there again if if the sensing is not done probably the you are prone to uh, you have automotive sensors uh, which are very limited and crude for example uh, there are a lot there is a lot of noise in sensors and uh, it they are affected by environmental conditions like rain haze and uh, other factors dew and other factors and then uh, so and in our, and also these sensors are expensive in order to get a high precision and high accuracy result you have to go for an expensive sensor uh, so these are actually the primary reasons why we are uh, lacking behind in in uh, the development of autonomous systems but uh, sensor fusion provides an effective solution for this wherein uh, you can use multiple sensor configuration in order to create a 3d image of the world around the vehicle and uh, make effective uh, perception system and, and so in that way you are reducing the cost of the sensors and cost of the uh, sensors uh, and also improving effectiveness of the sensors so these are some of the benefits of sensor fusion system sensor fusion which it reduces uncertainty by for example a data from gps imu and radar can be fused in order to understand uh, get a better picture uh, in, uh, instead if we are just using the gps and imu data we pro uh, just the gps data because of the refresh rate and a lot of other obstructions and disturbances the date we, we might lose uh, sign we might lose data we might not get the clarity or effective solution that we are requiring for a autonomous system the other uh, other and the other imp uh benefit of uh, sensor fusion is that uh, it enables the system to estimate states which are otherwise unobservable for example if there are two vehicles uh, in a multi vehicle environment on a highway if there are two vehicles approaching each other from opposite directions it is difficult to estimate the uh, vehicle velocity of the on uh, oncoming vehicle uh, without a sensor so this particular uh, fusion uh, uh, fusion techniques and enables you to understand the position the velocity uh, which are uh, usually not uh, observable or est uh, or measurable and then you have it also increase the uh, certainty of the physical state for example a radar sensor can be fused with lidar sensor in order to get uh, get more certainty on the physical state of a particular obstruction or an object that is obstructing your path uh, okay now in order to establish a sensor fusion effective sensor fusion system you have to have have an intelligent agent framework as we discussed in slide 5 an effective sensor configuration which means that you have to have a group of sensors uh, that is effective for the vehicle for long range as well as short range and then you have to use probabilistic methods for integrating the data between different sensors okay now uh, we are going to get into more uh, details or more depth of sensor fusion wherein we use uh, sensor fusion is basically the algorithm or the or that is included in the classical approach as we discussed before so it will be using uh, mathematical uh, mathematic mathematics uh, which include conditional probability and bayesian law the conditional probability is the probability of an event given some other event has already occurred so that uh, so the probability of an event to occur depends on the probability uh, uh, depends on the probability of another event has been occurred so here we are, we can see the venn diagram wherein we have two events a and b uh, the probability of a uh, a uh, when b happens is given by the formula that is indicated on the slide now uh, the same can be written for the probability of b uh, on occurrence of a by clubbing the both equations that we see here uh, we get the final equation which is the base law wherein the probability of b on occurrence of a is equal to the probability of a on occurrence of b multiply the probability of b whole divided by the probability of a in order to better understand it i don't think it is easy to understand from uh, the formulas but in order to better understand it i have put an image here wherein you can see that uh, the p of x is the uh, estimate or uh, the knowledge uh, the, uh, the the prior knowledge that we have about the system then uh, p uh, p of uh, y of x uh, is the probability of uh, event y 
on pro uh, conditional probability of event y is given by the measurement and on fusing these two data you are getting a uh, inner circle which is of orange color wherein uh, you have reduced noise where the scope has reduced so it has increased the accuracy and preciseness of that particular measurement um, and uh, below that graph you can actually see uh, two sensors trying to target a particular object and the uh, sensor data from both sensors are fused in order to get a effective so here we again see we can use additional and conditional knowledge in order to improve an estimate of the state of a system now sensor fusion because uh, we are again dealing with analog systems uh, that is that is there are uh, there is a constant change with time the systems change continuously with time so we cannot use a probability for a discrete time interval discrete time 